Every year when the holidays roll around, I create my own holiday card, Yuletide card is what I call it. In Denmark, Christmas is called Jul. Um, so this is my annual uh, Julekort, which means Christmas card. So in uh, 2017, I filled out a sketchbook with a lot of gnome drawings. I did a sketchbook tour on it earlier on the channel, so I'll link that down below for you. And I wasn't quite sure what to do for my card this year, so I decided to look through that sketchbook again and find a sketch that I really liked and then scan it. After scanning it, I open it up in Photoshop and you can see the spread here of the two drawings. So the first thing I do is I adjust my format and set it up so it fits how I want to print it on the card. And next, after that, I start blocking in the colors. I unfortunately didn't get to record the beginning of it, so we're jumping right into where I'm, I blocked in the colors and right now I'm starting to detail her face. I like to detail the face out in the beginning of illustrations because it really kind of gets me interested in the artwork and makes me connect with the character as I'm working on it and then I become excited to kind of see the figure and it, the world that the figure is in take place or come alive. So I'm working in Adobe Photoshop and I'm working on a Wacom Cintiq 27 HD Touch and um, for brushes I'm using Greg Rukowski's brushes from Gumroad. I'll put a link down in the comments for it. So I'm tweaking and adjusting the face quite a bit here because I wasn't using reference for it. I will recommend uh, always use reference, like don't try to do it without it. It's generally not a good idea. You get better results if you have good reference. Next up I'm going to start working on the folds of her skirt and working out like how the light is going to hit them. I slowed down the recording a little bit here so you're going to see it more real time. I have had some requests for putting out more real time videos but my painting process is so slow that a lot of my paintings just, they take over 20 hours and I don't think anyone really wants to sit through 20 hours of painting. It gets really boring unless you're the one who's painting. It's kind of like watching the grass grow. Um, but I was thinking that I could do, um, you know, shorter videos that have sections that are real time, for instance, like painting a hand or painting a face or something like that. So I might experiment with that later on. Let me know in the comments if that's something you're interested in. So we're speeding it up a little bit again here to get those folds in and figuring out the light and the shadows around that area. And then I started to work a little bit on details in her hair and adding some texture to the hair. On an illustration like this, I kind of go back and forth in my painting process. You know, I'll, I'll put down some colors, I'll adjust them, I'll tweak them, I might paint them out again. You're going to see um, a little further along here that I put like some light on the hat because I thought that maybe the light from the lantern would hit on her leaf hat and then I kind of changed my mind again and I dull it down. Um, I also imagined that the hat, the red part on the hat would be, she painted it red because it's supposed to be like a Christmas hat. And then later on I thought, you know, maybe it's more like a red leaf that she used for it. So you can see the hatch changing here. And uh, at this point I start to work a little more on the light and details of her outfit. I wanted her to have like a classic Scandinavian sweater on. And her outfit is generally inspired by, <laughs> excuse my cat. Um, her outfit is inspired by the farmers' outfits uh, from old Scandinavia. I grew up with, I grew up in Denmark, so I'm very familiar with that kind of um, look. And these gnomes are heavily inspired from that. Gnomes play a big part in Scandinavian folklore. At this point, I start painting in the background. Uh, before, I wasn't sure if it was going to be a horizontal or a vertical format. I was thinking it could be a portrait format, and that would kind of simplify the image a little bit. But then I was also playing around with the idea of maybe she would have an animal companion. I ended up deciding against that, but still sticking with the horizontal format, just to kind of give it a little more space around and, and make the uh, environment more of a part of, of the illustration. So when painting snow, it's really important not to use pure white. Use, you know, different shades of gray, different shades of brown and blues and greens. And so the snow is very reflective. And if you just have pure white, it's easily going to make your image look boring and washed out. So make sure you just blend like a lot of different colors in there. There's actually no pure white in this image yet. So at this point, I start to solidify the light from the lantern a little more and tightening up the details on her outfit, adding in cast shadows. Cast shadows um, are really important when it comes to setting a creature or an object or um, a human being in the environment, making them part of the environment. Shadows play a really big part in, in doing that. And then I start to detail out the mushroom. So in the sketch, the mushroom had water on it, but for the scene, I wanted it to be like a snowy winter scene. 
so it's much easier to render out the mushroom first before adding snow to it because that way you have the under layer done you know what the shape is of it and then afterwards you go in and you add snow on top so I'm also keeping the snow on a separate layer from the gnome so I can toggle it on and off at any time I really like using a lot of layers when I'm painting in Photoshop most of my illustrations have about a hundred different layers I will merge them up and down as the process develops and as I'm certain about aspects of the uh, illustration I might merge some of the layers but usually I end up around like the 100 layer mark when I'm done with my pieces and then I'll merge them all together at the end of it. So now I'm going to go in and really solidify some of the shadows and, and find out where the light and the dark is on, the, on her hat and underneath the mushroom layer. I'm also blending her into the background a little more, making those edges um, look good. So when you're painting, generally you want to do light on dark or dark on light, so that way your subject is always separated from the background. You can have lost edges too, which is um, definitely something that you know looks really good if, if you know how to master it. But to separate your subject, uh, make sure that you have those value differences with the light and the dark. Uh, one of the common mistakes for young illustrators, and this is something I used to do a lot, is that you don't have very good values uh, in your illustrations and then when you squint at the image everything is kind of the same shade of gray and it makes it hard to pick out like what's actually happening in the image. Remember, I, um, I went to this uh, artist workshop one time with Selda Devon, who is like a wonderful illustrator, and she offered to do portfolio reviews for her and she was looking through my illustrations and she said, like, you, your artwork is very charming, but it's just all this, you know, it's the same pot of, like, muddy colors. It's all just the same gray tones. You need to go in and you need to, like, make those values separated. And that's something that's always stuck in my mind since then, so that's something I always try to be on the lookout for. I still have a lot to learn when it comes to it, but, you know, you keep practicing, you keep it in mind, and, and you go on with it. So now I'm just about ready to toggle the snow layer back on and um, then I kind of realized that snow needs to hit her hat as well because it's not covered by the mushroom. <laughs> it's the little details, it's those little fun things that make characters really be in the environment that they're living in. And you can see I'm like s switching up the colors here, dulling down that snow a little bit because it's a little too bright and then going in and adding some stars to the sky and finally playing around with some more snow in like an all over snow effect and some texture to the snow that she's walking on. In this part of the process it's really kind of adding those final details and it's making the whole thing come together, making sure the light is right everywhere, that everything just is tied together. I'm adding some footsteps here because obviously there would be footsteps in the snow when you're walking through it. And all of this just helps to make the character part of the environment. And then I'm also realizing that the snow blobs that I have falling off her um, mushroom uh, is are a little too round, they're a little too not natural, so <laughs> I'm going to be going in and working on those. Here I'm darkening the overall piece just to get more of a sense of light from that lantern and to make it like a, more of like a winter's eve, you know, makes the mood a little more cozy. We're refining the snow a little bit more. I like to use what's called a multiply layer in Photoshop for adding in shadows and also for doing like overall color changes or to like when I'm darkening the piece I'm going in on a new layer that's a multiply layer and I'm using a dark blue color and then I will erase out where I want the light to be and then at the end of an illustration you can see that right here I open up the color sliders and I start to play around with the colors and just make sure that the colors are really unified I think this is, um, it's like a key step in, in my illustrations is always making sure at the end of it that all of those colors are really kind of coming together. It's really one of the great benefits from working digitally that you can tweak the colors all the time. Oftentimes if you see digital illustrations where the colors seem not to really come together or they're not really clicking, they're not unified, that's the step that's missing. Um, so if you go in, you open those color sliders, play around with it, you're gonna, you know, it'll hopefully make your illustration better. So the last step here is signing my name on the piece, and here we have it. This is the final illustration. So once I receive my cards back from the printer, I'm going to photograph them and then put them up in my online store. And for the photographing, I'm trying to do like a Christmassy flat lay, 
you can see some of it here. And if you're interested in any of these cards, I do have a very limited amount available in my shop. I'll put a link down in the comments for them. Next up, I would like to share with you the process of when I package my orders, because I thought that might be fun for some of you to see um, if you're interested in, you know, how you're running your day-to-day -day as an independent artist. So we are joined here by Moxie. She is Minion's sister, and she's really, really cute. <laughs> so um, first up, here are the four cards that you saw photos of before from the listing. So I start by putting them all into a um, clear clear bag, like a, uh, what are they called, cellophane, uh, cellophane envelope. And that's just to protect them in case of moisture during the mailing. Um, sometimes letters get wet, so this way it's going to reach the customer and still be usable even if the outer envelope has gone wet. And there's a great website that's called clearbags.com. That's usually where I order my uh, clear bags from. They have them in all sorts of sizes so you can get it so it fits your artwork. Um, these I had ordered, these are for 5x7. These cards are a little shorter than 5, but you know, it works. <laughs> and then I usually put a sticker on with my website address and my logo. Um, in this case, I'm going to use it to kind of fold down that envelope just so it's packaged really neatly. I like for my packages to look neat. <laughs> And then next up, I am going to also put a sticker on the front. And then I have these brochures I had made. It has a little bit about who I am, some sketches, a little tutorial, and then it also has a little bit about my two main projects, Montague Mouse and Lock the Legend. And I put one of these in with all of my orders. It's just like a fun little extra item for the um, customer. I'm kind of hoping they <laughs> have the feeling of being like a little mini um, art scene. And then I put in a card that just has a little thank you note for the customer on it. And then lastly, it's going to go in this um, vintage paper bag. I just like, you know, having a nice presentation for the items that you're selling to people. It just, I think it's important to show people that you care and, and that their sale is important to you, especially as a small um, independent uh, business because you're not going to have like a whole lot of customers, so you really want to appreciate the ones you have and make it truly special for them. And it's always a challenge to package things when you have cats around. <laughs> uh, Moxie is pretty good. She doesn't chew on stuff as much as Minion does. As you can see, she's just kind of chilling out and being a sweetheart. She's about two years old. Uh, she's a very affectionate little cat. And lastly, I seal these, this um, envelope with a sticker, and um, since it is the holidays, I'm using a gnome sticker, and then I put the thank you card on the outside. And then now it's going to go in a cardboard envelope, like a reinforced envelope that doesn't bend, and this is to ensure that the customer doesn't, you know, receive a damaged package. So that's why I'm using these uh, stiff, it's like a chipboard envelope. And then lastly, I am going to seal that envelope, put the address on, and then I have a little sticker I like to put on the outside that um, I drew it myself. <laughs> it's called uh, Magic Mail Whimsical Wonders Three-Eyed Owl. I, I don't know, it just makes the packaging fun. I like it. <laughs> and then I put a few more gnome stickers on there as well because it is the season. 
So now I'm going to spend the rest of my day fulfilling all my shop orders. I have a handful of orders for sketchbooks and a couple more for cards and things. This is because we just had Black Friday, so these are all my Black Friday orders that went out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I'm gonna be back soon with more videos for you. I hope you have a wonderful December. And last but not least, thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who support this channel. I really appreciate you. You are absolutely amazing. It is thanks to you that I can keep doing what I'm doing here. And um, yeah, you're just fantastic. Thank you so much.